If you must blink, do it now. Narrating me by bossing me around and telling me what to do. You're not my mom, Kubo. It's nice to finally see a movie willing to wrestle with the consequences of the Bruce Almighty moon effect. Those waves would be far more manageable if your moon was more believable. No matter how unusual it may seem. And no matter how much the camera tells you to focus on it. She waits for almost 10 seconds after the wave starts cresting before shredding. If you got that pick of destiny, why not use that sh immediately? If you fidget, if you look away, even for an instant, then our hero will surely perish. <laughs> you think you can blackmail kids into sitting still through a movie? I admire the ambition, but I once saw a kid get distracted by their own knuckles. They were convinced that if they clenched hard enough, the bones would escape through their hands and their whole skeleton would fall out. So, of course, they made these unwieldy gloves out of pillows and duct tape to prevent said escape, all while missing the most pivotal scene in the movie. The movie was Bambi, and the kid was me. Holy sh**, the artistry on display in this opening is spectacular. The emotion of it, the gorgeous visuals, doing stop-motion animation that involves f***ing sand. Take your sin off, Laika. You were it 24 times every second. Hold the phone there, paper wizard. How in the good name of Dunder Mifflin did you go from a Dorito to an intricate tiger that fast? No magic appears to have been used, so where did the stripes come from? I can't even make a paper football, and you're telling me you can turn this tiny square of paper into a scale replica of Shere Khan? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Purposely scaring children when they just want to be entertained. What are you, every children's movie in the history of film? The chicken again? The chicken is funny. The Moana's writer's room. Kubo is controlling magic paper puppets with the guitar, and this crowd is just chill spectating like it's funsy sketch time at the Ren Fair. I get that this isn't the first time, but it's still magic guitar controlled paper puppets. This armor was made up of three pieces. The first. Oh, I know, I know. That asshole in the theater who keeps trying to guess the twist using your cloaca as a weapon. Also, this is just straight theft of the Birdo battles in Mario 2, and no one steals from Mario and gets away with it. These shots of the movement of the sun through the sky are supposed to indicate that this storytelling goes on all day. No one had to eat. No one had any responsibilities. They all just came there to hang out there and stand in the sun for the whole day to watch a kid take 10 hours to tell a five minute story. Unless you're Peter Jackson, you aren't getting away with that People like an ending. Oh, where are you going? No, you, you can't. You can't leave. Thinking berating the storyteller will change the story. Perhaps I could, I, I could recall a different story. One that is more directly expositional and gives the audience the backstory they need to continue. They're family. No, they are monsters. False dichotomies. And there's one more thing. Never, ever stay out after dark. Because then the moon kid could spot you. But the moon is also out during daylight hours sometimes. So either these instructions aren't complex enough or the moon king's powers aren't complete enough. Only covering someone up to their sternum. Really insensitive of a kid to give his mom the cold shoulder like that. Paper boy! Here! Here! The scene does not contain a Brian Tyree Henry. In 72 years, he never had a thing to say. Now he's gone. I can't shut him up. Speaking of the dead, speaking. Place the lamp at the altar. Teaching your kid the art of conjuring spirits. I've seen enough Blumhouse movies to know this is terrible parenting. We have to help her get back to the spirit world. Sure, the drifting lanterns are beautiful and symbolic, but it gets super dark super quick when a family of sea turtles downstream ends up choking to death on all this paper. <laughs> dumping your dead grandma in the river. <gasps> Kubo. Kubo fucks up and ignores the one rule that he has to pay attention to because feelings. It's so lovely to meet you, Kubo. Face to face. <laughs> Forget the kids, I'm gonna have nightmares about this movie. What the hell, Laika? Also, Kubo's ants have been waiting his entire life for him to f*** up and stay out past sunset, but instead of immediately taking advantage of this presumably rare opportunity, they dance and prance around him for maximum creepiness, which gives him a chance to escape. Also, also, when they do finally decide to attack, they send the smoke monster from Lost after him, but at a speed even Michael Myers would give a muffled chuckle at. Somehow Kubo is able to outrun all these adults. Kubo, you must find the armor. It's your only chance. I know we have to initiate the quest of this movie somehow, but is the armor really his only choice? For the rest of the movie, his ants only attack at night, so can't they just hide again and not come out in the evenings? He had a magical flying robe this whole time and you didn't tell him? Imagine how much more money he could have earned by using it during his all-day storytime marathons if he'd known that. Now come on, get up! Let's go! Sure, I'll follow the talking monkey that seems to know way more about my situation than any monkey has a right to. Talking animals are totally normal, and I shall treat this like any other Tuesday. Assuming the sentient monkey you just met and already completely trust can be ridden without consent. 14 full seconds of them running through the blizzard. Movie has time for all the monkey business. You might be tempted to complain about the odor. Keep in mind, my sense of smell is 10 times stronger than yours. One-uppers. Yes, I know you're the master of competitive suffering, but that doesn't mean I'm not suffering too. 
You have questions, I can tell. Who? You get three. Why only three? Okay, that was your first question. Only if you actually answer it, you pedantic ass. Look, your mother used the last of her magic to save you and bring me to life. Did she wake you up inside? Did she call you by name and save you from the dark? Did she save you from the nothing you've become? Also, it's pretty wild that the last of her magic wasn't enough to get them out of there, but was enough to create a fully sentient and intelligent life form out of an inanimate wooden charm. Also, also, how was she able to hold back exactly the right amount of magic for this very specific last resort plan? What if the night origami had used it all up? This is a beautiful gesture, but damn it, I want specifics. Oh, it's too hot. Not checking the temperature of steaming liquid you were putting in your mouth, thereby ensuring that it not only includes your own backwash, but also a healthy dose of monkey spit as well. Okay, you better start taking this seriously, Kubo. This is real. It is not. This is not a story. It is. She used the last of that power to bring me to life. Look, if you're gonna repeat lines, I'm repeating sins. Wake me up! Wake me up inside! I can't wake up! He's been standing there for hours. You're only telling him this now? Why wake him up in a panic if this happened hours ago? There's some metaphor here about how littering is endangering the natural environment, but I don't think the movie even realizes it, which means Kubo is just being a dick to this bird. We grow stronger. The world grows more dangerous. Ah, yes, the Batman effect. So what's the answer here? Stop using his magic? What if the sisters decide to carry on regardless? What if the Joker wins and the evil district attorney gets murdered? Correlation does not equal causation, monkey. Kubo plays a couple of chords here to direct this bird directly into the monkey's butt because... Hilarious, but how were the paper birds flying before that when he wasn't playing? Did they just go on autopilot? Are they now independent living creatures? If so, him using that guitar to force control one up a monkey's sphincter is some pretty dark stuff. Any moment something terrible could come out of nowhere and- And wait for the perfect moment to dramatically kidnap the hero as their kidnapping is being described? Possible, but I'd avoid it. It's a little on the nose. Conveniently placed pre-sharpened stabby bone is pre-sharpened and conveniently placed. If you have no memory, how can you be certain of anything? Monkey would be Kubo's mother hiding inside a monkey's body at Cinema Sense. Huh? That was weird. Hanzo was my father. Kubo! <laughs> this is a miracle. You bet your kindness as it is. Kubo and Monkey have managed to bump into one of the few survivors that just happened to serve under Kubo's father. What are the odds? The only way this would be weirder is if his father was alive all along and they happened to bump into him too. Kubo is still using these birds? Kid gets some creatures he can remote control and he goes full in on the forced labor, huh? Firing an arrow into a wall is hardly what I'd call. <laughs> Impressive. You mean wasteful, right? That's four arrows you just destroyed, and I'm pretty sure there isn't a Bass Pro around for several miles. Fortunately, the amnesia tick was able to break through this wall. But what if he hadn't joined them yet? Hanzo goes Paper Mario and disappears with no way of them being able to follow him. That doesn't look good. Actually, it looks amazing. Like everything in this movie. Every new environment in this movie just makes me mad that all movies don't take this amount of time and care with the visuals. One sin for Hollywood not living up to this movie's unrealistic standards. Don't touch anything. And then they touch all the stuff anyway. Kubo is being very flippant for a kid who's being chased for his eyeball and is tangentially responsible for a village massacre. <laughs> the stranded beetle bit will always be funny, but the forgettable Hulk has amnesia. It's not like he's unaware of his physical capabilities. Why doesn't he roll to the side instead? Stealth is my middle name. Stealth is a terrible middle name and your parents are cruel. Oh, I've played this level in every Zelda game ever. As much as I love this amazing stop motion boss battle with what I discovered was the largest stop motion character ever created, I have to sin you because no one steals from Mario and gets away with it. I invoke the sword of do you have to say that each time you use a sword? Or just when you're building up to it, not doing the thing it's designed to do? Just making sure for when this almost certainly isn't said later. Uh, this is problematic. Said the samurai played by Matthew McConaughey. Oh, foot! You can fly? Apparently, yes! Who the f cares? You were underneath a stomping foot. Vertical movement was never the issue. Uh, what? No! Don't worry, monkey. From your angle, you should be able to see that Kubo is going to inexplicably fall at something close to a 45 degree angle and land exactly where he started instead of plummeting to his certain death as gravity would suggest. Yeah. Yes! Deus Ex Calibur! This has turned out to be another one of those frustrating treasure rooms where I can't decide if the monster was guarding the mystical item, testing looters for worthiness, both, or neither. Regardless, it did a pretty terrible job considering it missed multiple opportunities to finish them off and the test was passed with little more than dumb luck. Ooh, ooh. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, we're done here. Was that mom monkey about to give that dad beetle a happy ending? Because I think that mom monkey was about to give that dad beetle a happy ending. Hey, what were we grown up conversationing about? No, oh, you're ridiculous. You're just absolutely ridiculous. These two argue for all of the distracting the audience from seeing that Kubo is building a boat, even though the audience already knows he's building a boat. But hey, distractions, cliches got a cliche sometime. Did you know you could do that? Holy shit, this magic continues to be extremely powerful and very poorly explained. This is a little different from origami birds. This is a whole ass functional shit with like sails, a mast, and other technical nautical stuff. Shouldn't Kubo need to know how to build something before magicking it out of thin air? If he can pull this shit off, why didn't he just create a giant fucking bird and fly them all the way to Mordor? I mean, the armor. Close one eye. Guess you've got that part covered. Wow, hilarious stuff, Beetle. Using something a child might be sensitive about as a joke is just top tier humor, asshole. If you caught all these fish with an arrow, where are all the holes? Show me all the fish holes, movie. We're going to need something to cut this with. Using mythical weapons for food preparation. I'm also calling stop motion bullshit that Atomic Bonobo was able to slice the fish this thoroughly with just a couple of swings. Sword unbreakable. Which will rapidly become the sword unsanitary if you don't clean it after cutting that raw fish. Sometimes I would tell my mother stories about little things, like skimming rocks across the river or... Skimming? I believe you mean you would make those rocks skip. Not eating all of your sashimi. Fish died so that you could leave their carcasses in the sun to rot. Finish eating it. Show me them tonguing the fish to completion movie. We're gonna have to head for shore. Find a hiding place and- Monkey seems to have been caught off guard by the sun suddenly doing that thing it does every fucking day. You were in the middle of the goddamn ocean. How did you not plan ahead for this? You know, the thing that Kubo has had to do his entire life. I can't believe Kubo left this behind on the ground. Do you want ants? Because this is how you get ants. I'm not exactly sure what Kubo's magic guitar powers can do, but I'm doubting they have anything to do with the fact that he will be this deep underwater for five minutes and not drown or suffer from decompression sickness. This, of course, robs us of a scene where a coroner is asked how the origami creatures all died on the return to the surface, and he sullenly responds, the bends, of course. This victory brings me no honor. But your premature celebrationing will bring you the standard villain talks the hero to death instead of deathing them to death sin. I felt loss only once. Eleven years ago, I lost my sister. Mid-battle expositioning of information both combatants already know and neither benefits from. Beetle! Wh- what happened? Where's Kubo? Vovich for Vendetta here will take advantage of this distraction by inexplicably kicking Charlize Panzi instead of stabbing her. Why doesn't she want to win? <laughs> For some reason, blunt force trauma seems to work very well against this witch god creature thing. Look, I know I'm piling on, but I just want to understand how the monkey has the upper hand here. If we're not careful, this becomes a slippery slope. And before you know it, you're in the future staring at a busted up Statue of Liberty wondering how the heck we got here. Oh my goodness, what a twist! What a revelation! Color me not shocked. I don't care if it's fake, animated, or the size of a skyscraper and being attacked by Harley Quinn. I never need to see an eyeball being punctured. It never fails to amaze me how the creatures down here fight so hard just to die another day. To be fair, you're the one that seems more likely to live and let die, even though you have a view to a kill. It made me stronger. Holy sh! Did Clea in present danger just murder her sister? We see the mask fall and she isn't in this next scene, so she either inexplicably left or we just witnessed a murder. Please, please, wake up. It's gonna be all right. Apparently back in 2016, platitudes were briefly the new CPR. The night I met your father. Scene does not contain a Hillary Duff. You are my quest, he whispered. Ah, yes, the romantic ideal that women are things that men pursue to be won or conquered. True love grand. And then he gave me you. Skipping the good bits. Come on, give me that orgamorgy, you cowards. I want to see those folds. Show us the flaps. That was exactly as gross as I intended, and I am ashamed. Monkey, why didn't you tell him sooner who you really are? Beetle asks an important question, and Monkey says it's because her magic is fading and Kubo would be alone. But I can't shake the feeling that the real answer is that the movie just wanted a few third act reveals. Your story will never end. Artax! Sorry, not sure what happened there. I think I have an auto sin response to never ending stories. Is this a good dream or a bad one? Well, we've got Ray Fiennes voicing a statue of an old guy playing a banjo of some sort, and I guarantee that's at least someone's oddly specific nightmare. Give this story a happy ending. Gross. I spy with my one eye something beginning with. S. Sentimentality? Saccharin? Schmaltz? 
Sanctimony! The end of one story is merely the beginning of another. Okay, fine, I'll admit it. This message about loss and transition is pretty powerful. I don't have much heart, but congratulations, Kubo, on pulling at my two remaining heartstrings. There's something I don't understand. Why would the helmet be here? Kubo! Oh no, they figured out it was a trap just in time to be able to do absolutely nothing about it. And yet somehow this will still not matter either way. Yay for tension! You took her from us. It was only fitting we took something from you. So your sister falls in love with a dude and in a jealous rage you erase his memory and turn him into a beetle? But not just a regular beetle, a giant beetle with a human brain. Wasn't the original mission to kill him? Why didn't they just kill him? Also, why would she spill the beans now about who he is without even being asked? What was the point of hiding his identity from him if you were just gonna give it back to him as a big final plot-based movie reveal? Oh. I'm forgetting what I came here for. But even now that I've remembered, I will still reach for you very slowly and give you ample opportunity to sucker punch me. I'm just a good sport like that. <laughs> I really wish this thing was called the Sword Undroppable. That way, it would be way more helpful based on what we've seen to date. Ah! Hanzo has been standing here the whole time and is just now acting? While well, she was jumping from one fight to the next! What was he doing? He's laughing his sick f***ing ass off! He's a tight ass! He's a sadist! He's an absentee father! Worship that! Never! You are my quest. You always have been. Not your well-being is my quest. Not your happiness is my quest. No, you, the object, are my quest. Sorry, I know I already mentioned it, but I'm f***ing annoyed by romantic conquest culture, okay? Also, Legolas than Helpful here suddenly remembers he loves Kubo's mom because he's got the type of amnesia that magically reverses itself once you're told your own name. I feel like I'm supposed to have some sort of swelling emotions here, but I'm so f***ing lost. I'm glad Kubo has a renewed sense of determination, but why did he break that last string? And how did he know that would summon Doctor Strange's cloak? Kubo, is that you? You have to leave this place. I mean, duh, right? How are these people still here in the town square days later? Even if you didn't want to leave your homes, why would you just be hanging out near the debris tonight? The Moon King. He is coming. I said, gross. Can't wait to find out how this armor comes together to unite the distinct abilities of its components to create a being capable of challenging the gods. I'm sure it'll be super apparent during this final battle. You want to take my other eye. That's what you want. When the moon wants your eye like a big pissed off guy, that's the story. When the plots lose their shine, it's cause I've had much wine, it's a bore. Sins will ring tingle. You'll be stuck down here in this hell. Staring with that lonely eye at hate and heartache and suffering and death. Dude, chill out. There's every chance Kubo will never even go to the Midwest. When you're up there with me, you will be beyond stories. You will be immortal. Seriously, why does Stone Voldemort give a shit about Kubo? This is a lot of effort just to win over a kid that is clearly more human than he can tolerate. It's not like he needs Kubo for some ceremony or power source or something. He just kind of wants him so no one else can have him. Also, considering the length Grandpa went to to make sure that Hanzo didn't get this armor, he doesn't seem all that worried about being faced with it now. Especially since I have a funny feeling Kubo is going to end up winning the eventual fight here. Roll metaphors. It's in my memories the most powerful kind of magic there is. You say that, but did you see that badass sword? I'd like to see you prep sushi with your memories. You are the kindest, sweetest man to ever live in this village. While I love the idea that love and optimism lead the way to a new story for each of us, I also can't help but wonder if the things that made Grandpa such a moon hole are a bit deeper in there than these lies can get to. Lying to a psychopath doesn't make them not a psychopath. At best, it just makes them a confused psychopath. I know my stories can tend to get a little, um, long. And thanks to that very fact you've just missed out on, the movie comes in at under 90 minutes sin removal. You were very close though. I don't know exactly what the rules are or, or how this works. <laughs> Welcome to the f***ing party, kid. Watch out for paper cuts. If you must blink, do it now. <gasps> Kill the chicken! Rip it to pieces! I really hate that chicken. Remember what you must do, Kubo. Keep you with me at all times, Mr. Monkey. And? and keep Father's robe on my back at all times. And there's one more thing. Never. Ever. Never, never feed him after midnight. 
You got it? Why do we force her? So that we can learn to pick ourselves up. She doesn't have to answer your questions. Anyway, who are you? Now, when I was 15 years old, I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know, I gotta think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later, this person comes up and says, who's your hero? And I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. You can fly? He can fly. He can fly. He flew. I come fishing and all I reel in is a stinking ape. Damn you all to hell. And there he was, the mighty Hanzo. Whoa, whoa. Here I come. He looked into my eyes and uttered four simple words. These words changed everything. I'm your density. Uh, uh. You're hurt. It is but a scratch. Watching John with the machine, it was suddenly so clear. The Terminator would never stop. It would never leave him. You're old and mean and cruel. You're an inanimate f***ing object! Then tell him to suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. I, I don't see how that's a party. 